Good morning, good afternoon, good, good evening. Uh, welcome to session B10. Uh, I would like to uh, show some demos of Informix in Cloud Pack for Data. But before, uh, I would like uh, to give you a short presentation to explain what we will be doing and uh, my point of view of advantage of Informix and Cloud Pack for Data. Uh, so the agenda is very simply uh, why Informix and Cloud Pack for Data, uh, how Cloud, Cloud Pack for Data enhances currently used Informix data and uh, demos. So why Informix? and Cloud Pack for Data. Uh, we know that Informix is a hybrid database and can manage a lot of types of uh, data, so from traditional relation data, uh, time series, uh, native support, JSON design, native support, girl spatial, uh, and uh, many others, uh, Node, uh, etc. Uh, so it's a real hybrid database and it's the, from my point of view, uh, right uh, database for Cloud Pack for Data because Cloud Pack for Data brings uh, uh, the new dimension or view for all above Informix data contents beside the traditional applications, which means that uh, you are running still your traditional applications with Informix but Cloud Pack for Data bring the new functionality which can be used to manage all these types of data. Uh, so purpose of this demo or uh, this session is to show you that uh, the most critical services in Cloud Pack for Data uh, can accept and process Informix data and and enhanced um, the hidden information in Informix, et cetera. So how Cloud Pack for Data enhance currently use Informix data? So I say that uh, it's uh, something like all-in-one concept, uh, which is similar analogy as uh, the modern smartphones, where in modern smartphones, you have also all applications which you need for your normal life in one place. So all applications are in one device. So the same concept is also Cloud Pack for data. Uh, if we uh, look uh, first, uh, Cloud Pack for data via data virtualization allows to join different types of data sources from relational unstructured data. So uh, if the customer and also most of the customer has not um, only uh, the single type of database, single vendor data source, they have also other vendors of databases, etc. So Cloud Pack for Data can combine, can join via the data virtualization the data from different sources and can process this data. It adds some value from information point of view also for such kind of the solution. As the next step, which is possible to get from Cloud Pack for Data is content understanding and discovery. So in many times and also from my experiences with some other uh, products, for example, opting for test data management or data privacy, etc. Many customers are not aware of uh, not aware of the content of the data. They are not aware of the relationships among different tables about primary keys, etc. So, Cloud Pack for data has also the capability to discover all these hidden information or this information maintained on application level. And also data understanding what type of the data is maintained in different sources is also very important. Uh, other thing is uh, for the other processing or using of other services, we need some tools for data cleaning. So uh, there is uh, many of uh, duplicities in data. And if we combine the data from different sources, we bring new duplicities in data. So for, for example, for data science, we need to exclude or we need to replace null values for some 
uh, some meaningful values, etc. So data cleaning also is very part, very important part of uh, the functionality uh, of Caltech for data for uh, for other step for other services. Uh, there is also role based sensitive data anonymization. Uh, we have, for example, Optim Privacy Solution, but this Optim Privacy Solution is uh, dedica dedicated mainly for test data management, and masking is persistent to to databases. The main main difference. And also during a couple of RFIs, RFPs, the customers are requesting dynamic anonymization. So not on-prem anonymization on directly on the database in production database, but uh, dynamic anonymization, which is also available here in uh, CloudTech for data and is role-based based on the users and their role. The data can be hidden, uh, can be masked not to uh, not to disclose some personal or sensitive sensitive data uh, the other uh, what other step what we need to do or what we need to take into account is classification and cataloging of the data for the governance so governance catalog and classification of this data is also <clears throat> very uh, very important for uh, for for the data from business point of view, from business people, uh, business staff of, of the companies. Uh, other component is visualization and reporting. So to uh, really understand the data in the database, uh, we should have uh, the tools how this data uh, visualize so how create different graphs, how to create the reporting. So here it can be the point where we can finish with using of all these components uh, together with Informix. But we can go far, so uh, we can use or find some hidden information discovered by data modeling and predictive analytics. So if we will be able to accept informing data to different services, we can do the data science task, etc., which is also one of the main concepts of Cloud Pack for Data. Uh, all tools or many of tools doesn't or don't require any programming knowledge, etc. But uh, for example, for data science, machine learning, from time to time, they require some more complex tasks which requires support of programming language. So Watson Studio is an environment which allows you to write your application logic for data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence via, via Python or different statistics via R with support of in-memory processing in Spark as well. And uh, the Last, maybe the general point, uh, general set of tools is for, for sure artificial intelligence. So if we look all these whole picture, what CloudPack for data is offering for Informix data and also data sources is the way from the data which can be not understanding to the artificial intelligence where we can very efficiently use all information also from all other sources. So we have all these uh, can get together and can build any uh, data science, data modeling or artificial intelligence tasks. So now uh, before the demos or clarifying, what I will show you some disclaimers regarding demos. The goal of uh, the demonstration of Informix as a data source is, uh, uh, is uh, or the goal is um, to demonstrate that Informix can be used as a data source for most of the important cloud pack for data, but not only the data source, but the demos were showed on the simple examples that the Informix data is retrievable by the services that can be consumed by the services and processed in other steps of the services. 
On the other side, the goal is not to do some ultimate data science prediction or artificial intelligence project. It's not the goal of this uh, of this session, so it's out of scope of these sessions. So what will be demonstrated? The first will be how to connect to Informix databases, regardless uh, is local as a cartridge in Cloud Pack for data or remotely on-prem uh, current customers installation. It will be demonstrated as deep dive as a step-by-step. -step. The other, uh, I would like to repeat um, the demos which I presented during uh, one of the main sessions. So some simple modeling of time series trends by SPSS modeler. Uh, on the stores time series demo data. So it's um, very, very simple, very simple demo as you will see. So it's slightly deeper dive. It's not so deep dive, but deeper dive. Uh, in the other uh, demonstration, I will demonstrate that uh, Cloud Pack for Data or Informix in Cloud Pack for Data has activated also Mongo Wireless Center. And I will use the GeoJSON data, so data in JSON format, and I will use this Mongo Wireless Center to, to import this data to Informix. And on the other side, use Informix geospatial queries in Watson Studio. What is important here, Informix is uh, very powerful regarding the spatial queries. But on the other side, most of the geo data are published as GeoJSON. So I will also demonstrate that this GeoJSON data can be very fast and very simple processed also by these native spatial queries in Informix. Because all tools, third party tools, which are working with GeoJSON has not so, so uh, advanced uh, geo spatial processing as Informix has. So the combination geo JSON and Informix spatial is very, very nice here. And at last, as the biggest part maybe of my demos will be Project Titanic to show data refinery, data governance, masking, simple graphical analytics. So uh, just uh, the Titanic, uh, it's about the data. It's not about the project failure or project uh, results. So let's go to uh, to our demo. So uh, I question, I suppose, will be at the end of this. So let's uh, go to I did the recording for all these things uh, to be fast, but I will comment this recording. So the first will be the connection. So how to connect Informix to uh, Cloud Pack for data. Uh, so uh, now uh, the first uh, to get uh, to connect Informix, we need to construct SQL host entries for Informix. So if Informix is running locally, we need to uh, get uh, the port where connection manager is running because every communication with Informix in Cloud Pack for data is done via connection manager. So if we will go inside to connection manager, we can see that connection manager with this configuration manager file is running. So we can go to this connection manager configuration file, and we can find the Informix server. So Informix server, which can be used to the communication. So is the first thing which will be, will be used, it will be important. So now we can see that our Informix server is listening on this internal port. So we have the internal port, but in Kubernetes or OpenShift, we need to get the information to which number of the port is this internal exposed. So we need to get the information about services and from this type of service for connection manager, we can see all ports and mapping of the ports 
from internal to external, which is exposed externally to uh, to connect from external source. So now we can look and we can see that LTP, which is this number, is exposed to this number three zero and something. All external ports are greater than thirty thousand. So three zero something is the external port. So we have Informix server name, we have external port. So what we don't have is uh, the host name where uh, which can be used to communicate uh, with the database server. In my cases, uh, my demo machine or my demo cloud record for data is installed in VMware infrastructure. It's not cloud based, so I have no load balancer here, which is assigning the right IP address, IP address for external IP address uh, for, uh, for, for the services. So, in my case, uh, the load balancer is HA proxy, which can be used as a load balancer as well. But in this case, as you uh, saw previously, I get the information, if I will return a little bit back here, here, I get the information where connection manager on which node is running here, and the, the, my connection manager port is running on this node, so this node will be my external host name used for connection with Informix. So I will use this name or uh, or uh, this IP address as the missing entry to my SQL host entry. So this is the full SQL host entry to connect my Informix running inside Callpack for data. In the next uh, demos, I will exactly use uh, these entries to connect Informix from other services. So let's go on with stores. So now I will demonstrate how to simply connect the stores uh, database or create the connection for stores database, which will be used uh, for the first task. I'm using Informix HQ as a graphical interface for uh, for um, uh, Informix running in South Cloud Pack. So the first I will create a demo database, source demo database from this uh, uh, schema manager from HQ. So we can see it here. So it's created with all tables, uh, etc. So in the next step, I need to uh, create a connection inside as an asset inside Callpack for data. So I created some project and I add to the project in Callpack for data. Uh, sorry, uh, just here. Here is created connection. Here is the created connection with all information using of all information which i get from the previous steps and here i will break this demo and will continue with this time series demo which you saw during uh, on tuesday during the main session uh, so i will add uh, to uh, cloud pack for data uh, some uh, uh, modeler, SPSS modeler to process time series data. We know that uh, the part of stores are some time series demo data. So we will analyze these time series data. So we receive or retrieve from the existing connection our TS data table where time series data are located. Uh, but we use the select statement and you can see here this select, select statement here. Uh, you can see that it's exactly select statement from examples which are also exported during the creating of stores database. And this select statement, as you can see, uses 
exactly time series native functions. So these part of the demo demonstrate that you can use with this service directly all native time series function to process the data in SPSS modeler. So we will copy this select statement here to this part. We will save it and we create data asset. We can check that uh, we are connected to data and that we can retrieve uh, the data here. So we have some timestamp and the value. And now in the next step, we will start with uh, creating the model. First, we will create the chart to understand the data. So we will retrieve directly the data from, uh, from the database based on the select statement, which I gave there and uh, we use the time plot uh, graph uh, to see how the data are distributed, which type of values, if there are some, uh, some, some, uh, some values which are not in normal distribution, et cetera. So we finished with the understanding of the data and now we will start with models. So first we uh, define the type uh, node which defines what will be modeled. So what will be the target will be the value and the value will be applied and model from SPSS. So we use time series, uh, uh, time series uh, modeling uh, node where we specify a time date field, which is ES and interval will be in days because as you uh, saw uh, the select statement process uh, by our uh, by our native uh, native functions is aggregating of 15 minutes ticks by day so we get the aggregation day by day so now uh, we finish the setting, what's the time series value, what's the value which will be part of the modeling. We will run our model and based on the running of the model, uh, we'll create this nugget, which is also uh, the modeling. So now we will see how the model will look like or how the model is in synchrony with the real data. So now we will use it by graph. It's the original value and TS value is the value. The second value uh, is the modeled value. So the first we will use the simple, simple model for this. It was in, in the modeling and we will run it. And now uh, we will see how the selected model is in synchronous with our data. So we will see that our data are in blue and the model is in red. Uh, this uh, model doesn't say anything about the trends of our time series. So we change the model to more better, which will be from the simple will be Holtz linear model to give us the trend of site of our time series, sorry. Uh, so if we rerun our, uh, re our, our model, we can see now that the trend is linear and is much more uh, significant that uh, the model, the trend of our time, time series is general is decreasing. So it's the very simple example how to use time series data in modeling. So in the, in the next step in this case, if we will have more and more time series data, we can, we can use much more precise models really to model and to do pre predicates also for the next uh, time intervals based on the existing existing data. So it's the second second demo. The other demo will be geospatial demo. So as I said, 
in this, I have set of uh, geo-JSON data. This geo-JSON data is data of borders, boundaries of all countries of worldwide. These boundaries are proximate. It's not exact uh, because the documents for this purpose are not uh, JSON documents are not so long, but all these documents are in geo-JSON format. So I took these documents and used Mongo, uh, Mongo uh, wireless center. So first I will need to get again uh, the similar ways and in stores uh, database, I need to get the service or port number where uh, Mongo listener is listening. So based on this, we can see that my Mongol listener is listening on 31805 ex external port. So in my script, which uh, as you can see, uh, which uh, is uh, Mongo client utility Mongo import is using this port to import my country's JSON file and now also we get the information about the node where uh, where the port with wireless center is running. So I have all information for Mongo import uh, for Mongo import utility tool to import this JSON data to uh, my database. So if we log on again to uh, HQ. And via schema manager, we can see that GeoDB database with collection countries was automatically created and is the real collection. So we can run a select statement against data cast to JSON and check that also for every country, Geo, Geo JSON string is uh, is loaded so you can see here the, the structure geojson is one of uh, or maybe only one uh, json string which is uh, uh, some kind defined it should contain the type properties uh, geometry on the other side json formats are free of any uh, definitions, etc. They are self-explanation, but only GeoJSON should have some fixed format. So let's go uh, to uh, Watson Studio. I create here the notebook, Watson Studio notebook, and automatically uh, from uh, from uh, here, whereas R0, zero, zero, 0.1.0.0, zero, zero, I generated this snippet of the code to connect to my existing connection. It is, it is uh, one other advantage because all connection is defined or for defining of the connection is done by uh, by internal cloud tech functions or Python function in this case. And as you can see, I constructed the select statement here from our collection where I am using uh, spatial functions here as, sorry. Okay. Uh, so you can see that um, the goal of this is to find all countries which are neighbors of Czech Republic, include Czech Republic. So I am using informix spatial function as, dins as distance, but this function requires different format of, uh, uh, of um, boundaries or GPS uh, boundaries of uh, these countries. So. Uh, the part of uh, spatial extension informates is function is e geom from B zone, which I am using here. So I am retrieving the data from geometry element key of the our geojson, 
and this function convert this GeoJSON data to native Informix data to be acceptable by a spatial function. So if the distance of two objects or two GeoJSON object is zero, it means that these objects are close together. So from the country perspective means that these countries are neighbors each other. What I am other using here is that I am calculating areas of these countries again based on the definition of boundaries of these countries. So let's go. Uh, we will open we will open uh, this uh, notebook, and when we will run it, and after run it, we can see here that we have countries i retrieve this information from geojson you can hear here that i use the json json uh, notation to retrieve uh, the names of countries and i calculated the areas areas are in kilometers squares the areas are approximate as i said before because uh, my geojson definition is not uh, is not exact uh, the points of boundaries has uh, pretty pretty far uh, differences uh, between each other so it's approximate but for uh, for the demonstration is enough so i demonstrate here that if you have some geojson data you can very simply process it by informix native functions and use also for other analyzing in watson studio for machine learning for example etc uh, and the last maybe uh, the uh, the longest part of my demonstration is the project titanic so the first what I will do is that I will connect to uh, HQ again and uh, I will go to my database, uh, the first, uh, to schema manager. And in schema manager, I have, I create the database for the database will be the database Titanic. And I will create it here in data DBS space, and that's that's all for this. So the database is created, and now I will look speed to my SQL host file, and you can see here in the SQL host file again uh, the here as the last is connection string, which I get from the first demo. So I have DB access running outside called pack for data. And I demonstrate now that I can normally load the data from outload file by DB access, which is running outside called pack for data. So I will connect to my Titanic database which is created in cloud pack for data so i will connect to my instance in cloud pack for data and normally will use uh, here this script to create the table with passengers and load the information about all passengers which traveled in titanic so I will run it. It was more than uh, 1000 and we can see that uh, the data was loaded to database and I can uh, I can list it, etc. So now uh, I will return to my cloud pack for data. Uh, I will log on to my uh, cloud pack. And the first thing which I will need, uh, this demo is uh, more from scratch than the previous one. The first, I will create the project. For example, again, the name of the empty project will be again Titanic, for example. I guess that I use Titanic. Yes, Titanic will be the project. And 
now after project creating here i need to add first the connection again the connection against the informix but the first thing which i will need to do is to do some governance uh, on top of my data, because for me now, the data is unknown. I don't know which types of the data is there, which categories or classes of data is there. So I create uh, the catalog, which will be used later as a central point of all assets. So all assets will be registered in this catalog. But to work with the data, we need to we need to create the connection to the data to the, to the database so it's also the demonstration that uh, watson knowledge catalog can also accept directly the data from informix we are again uh, submitting the values from um, sql host entry from connection uh, which uh, i used before and uh, now, when I will do it, I will use username, test connection, test is successful. I will create this connection and this connection will be used also for, for other purposes, for other services, not only for this catalog. So now I have in catalog connection, uh, this Titanic connection and I can give directly the asset as a data source. The asset will be passenger table. So passenger table will be the asset which will be used for task which can be done by cataloging by by governance by our knowledge catalog. So I will open this asset and now I can check that I am retrieving correctly the data from Informix. I can do the profiling of the data uh, where after profiling of the data, you can see that uh, governance catalog assign automatically uh, the classes. Some classes are not correct, so I can use my own classes for data classes. For example, here is customer number, last name was uh, uh, here in, the, uh, in the travel class, it's not uh, correct. So. Uh, here I change it to travel class, uh, survived, yes, no, it's correct, last name, it's correct, uh, uh, correct, etc, uh, etc. Et here the H, I will change it uh, to H class. And also this, uh, there are the number of siblings and the number of parents because uh, I will do some analysis how many travelers uh, traveled alone or not alone here. So number of relatives here will be also number of uh, uh, relatives. So I have these. And uh, here is the ticket number. So I again the check or uh, give uh, the um, class ticket number, etc. This classification is very important because based on this classification, I can manipulate with this data. For example, based on classification, I can decide which data should be for example classified as a as a as a sensitive or personal etc so for example in this case last name will be classified as a sensitive so i will create the rule here to uh, mask dynamically mask the last name so i will create the rule for the masking so if condition um, data class is last name, then I use the reduction. So you can see if we will go a little bit back here, you can see that if data class is last name, so contains any value from last name, last name class, I will reduct data as an action in columns 
which contains values from data class last name. Yeah, it's last name masking here. So if I will do it and uh, run it, As an admin, I still see this data here. So I add some other collaborator, which will be viewer or editor, for example, user Joe here will be editor. And any other user who is no admin won't be able to see this classified data. So if the user Joe will access I, I will add also uh, from, from the uh, role, um, uh, role um, perspective um, possibility that user Joe can access this asset as well. And if you log, log in as a user Joe, user Joe won't be able, as we will see later, I will a little bit speed up the recording. So he will open uh, these and if we look to Titanic and to assets, you can see that data masking is now dynamically in progress. And now after that, you can see that for profiling, the data is not visible. And if you look to asset, last name is masked. So this user Joe is not able to see the last names because his data is classified for them, for him, sorry. And so now uh, I will log on back to administrator, go to catalogs. And the other thing will be uh, that uh, I add this asset after doing uh, some uh, some governance task i added this assets to my project i add to the project data refinery uh, data, uh, data refinery uh, data refinery service this data refinery service allows me to display graphically display the data so first i have the previewing of the first 50 rows and after the rest of the rows will be loaded. I see uh, that uh, I want to calculate the number of relatives for every uh, for every traveler to do some other analysis. So this data refinery allows me to create the new uh, new column uh, with family. Uh, so this column I changed also substitute uh, or uh, conditionally replace that if it's greater than zero, uh, it means that is one. So uh, this traveler is traveling with family and otherwise, otherwise will be zero. So this traveler is traveling alone. So it's alone. So I will change it again. I can, uh, I can change uh, also, there is some other thing here. There are uh, the title, there are some duplicate value for title. Uh, so for title, I changed uh, here, this MS and LLS uh, to miss. Also to have uh, the better data sets. So again, I will do it here by operations here, so if title is equal to MLL is miss, so I will replace this value and also the other conditions is if title will contain, contain or is equal to MS will be also the miss. So it's exactly data cleaning part or for this. So now for profiling, I have only the main Mr. Miss, Mrs. and Master um, titles. 
I can visu do visualization of the data. So with using of the new column as well. So I will use bar plot and now the category will be survived. So I want to create uh, the, I want to create a chart uh, who survived based on the traveling class. Yeah, so you can see the number here, a number of travelers based on the class. So you can see that the most of the travelers which doesn't survive was from the third class. Here is the bigger, bigger one. And from historical point of view is the known, known information for, for this. Uh, I can do some other graphical analysis here. For example, I can do it based on the sex. So we can see that um, the most number of, of, of women uh, uh, want survived uh, because probably traveled in a third, third class. Uh, this with M family, I will change also to string, and um, so if uh, it's equal to uh, to to one, I specify to with family uh, to have the distinct values for uh, other analyzing. Uh, so now uh, I have these values, so I can do some other visualization here that the category will be again the service, but I will split it based on family, with family. So we can see that, uh, maybe I skip it too fast. You can see here, you can see here that the number of uh, survived, survived and not survived based on family status or if traveling alone or with family. Yeah, here is also some other. Uh, and uh, one of the last, almost last visualization. Okay, so it's the same, so I can speed up this. And the last here will be that I will use Also, through the project, just to wait, when to, I will add here the notebook. So Watson Studio Notebook to do analysis uh, with Python language. So all previous analysis which I did didn't require any programming. Watson Studio allows you to, uh, to create models, et cetera, and allows you to do uh, the more complex logic here. So I will add the connection. Here is uh, the generated connection. So you can see that I didn't any type of, I didn't any type of uh, programming for connection. Connection, if we will, little bit back. Connection was automatically generated and we tested that we are retrieving the data. For other, I, for example, at the age or analyze the age, which is the minimum or maximum age of travelers, how many percent of um, person within different age categories. So I create the new column age category for adult, for child, for old. So it's based on some other core documents. So I, I found that I am old man based on this and the missing missing data. So now, uh, now I can again here display the data and these data are replaced. We have the new age category, adult, child, adult, etc. And we can also here do some select statement here where we have the information based on the categories, how many survived, 
for from adult, from child, and there are some missing data which need to be also resolved later in the analysis for other modeling, but it's it's out of scope of uh, this um, uh, this uh, this demo. So uh, that's all from myself. I don't know if there are some questions. I will look. Thanks, Johan. Anybody have any questions? We still have maybe a minute or two we can squeeze in here. Just go ahead and put your questions in the chat. There we have yes. a question. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, I am using Informix cartridge, but also it's possible to uh, use uh, Informix external. So. I tested both Informix cartridge, but for all what you saw here is based on Informix cartridge. But I have also some other different demos uh, with Informix running externally. So it's a big advantage of this because uh, if the customer upgrade his Informix to Informix cartridge, he has the possibility to use CloudPack uh, services together with his current database which is running on-prem and based on the requirements, move of the part of the data to Informix inside local as an Informix cartridge, so local to running in, in, in the cloud pack or data. Thank you. Any more questions? If not, we'll let you on off the hook and we'll move on to one of our next sessions okay thank you thank you very much to all thank you thank you everyone. thank you